Yeah, man. To knock only sessions with Condra. She bought Shalom. Hey, hop to the tribe, man. We did it again. Another checkpoint. Getting Zani, enjoying the water. Just enjoy the water, feel the water. You know, enjoy the Shabbat, you did it again. Enjoy the tribe, the family around you. Meditate on Hawa, you know. All the great, you know, fiery, fiery ones, you know what I'm saying, that protect us. You know, meditate on Hawa and all the wall of protection, man. And the greatness of our creator. I'm a Abba, framer and shaper. We here, man. We in here, man. Allow a while. Let's get it. The Book of Ruth, chapter one. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about Moab, you know, and all that. And uh, you know, I just want to show that it is a, it is a family affair. It's not just about, you know. Uh, separation or a hatred for one of this you know we're unraveling a lot of truth right now man you know and we've already had to deal with ourselves and look ourselves in the mirror you know now we have to put our story together Humpty Dumpty got to get put back together and you know the truth does hurt you know what I'm saying to really realize what the story really is you know what I'm saying this more and more war we're talking about is just a tribal war like it would be on any continent for longitude and latitude. You know what I'm saying? And you have those that are worshiping different powers and entities trying to get an advantage. You know, you have the faithful ones and then you have the ones that say, man, Hawa don't hear us. Let's just call on this power. And this breaking of the code just putting the power before our power all over and over again, open up the floodgates, man, for the worst of the heathen. And these other tribes have become a thorn on our side since we didn't KTC. But it is all in the family, you know what I'm saying? Um, it is all in the Shabbat that we can come together and, you know, choose up and, you know, understand that, you know, we've... <laughs> We've all been, you know, um, intermixed or, you know, walking, walking together in one way or the other, you know, from the tribes of Judah and the tribes of Moab, you know what I'm saying? And the Ammonites, you know, and, you know, all that. I mean, you know, obviously it ain't about, oh, I'm, I'm pure water Judah. I'm pure water, uh, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm pure water Ephraim, like, come on, man. you know, it's not about that. It's about rocking a pure water code and a pure water frequency. Believing in the pure water frequency and the pure water code that can tune us up to be what we're supposed to be. The tribe of Israel wouldn't be the tribe of Israel without the code. If the code was given to another tribe, then they would be, you know, who all that Baruch, Baruch God, who all the blessing who all the inheritance is sworn unto, you know, as a covenant. But Hawa made a covenant with you, with your ancestors, with your tribe, and other folks didn't like that. They weren't feeling that. Other, you know, cons, other brothers and sisters, other tribes were looking at that like, nah, I don't like that. They got too much Baruch. But what do we do with that Baruch? Hawa doesn't have a problem giving us that Baruch, but what are we going to do with that Baruch? So I'm going to read a story in the book of Ruth. You know, showing this connection between Moab and Judah. <laughs> Literally, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Moab and Judah. Um, you know, just connect the flow, connect a little Tamar in there as well. 
Uh, but really talking about the Aqua Ruth, you know, Ruth the Moabite, man, you know. Obviously, you know, many know is what the, the grandmother or great grandmother of David. So it's all in the family. <laughs> you see why, you know what I'm saying? One would want the other's things, right? I mean, there is it's like what? You know, you you got us in your family and we got you in our family. You know, well your land is my land and, and and why do you get that land? You know what I'm saying? We we got an inheritance, you know, back to this as well, you know what I'm saying? We connect back to your great grandmother, you know what I mean? It, it becomes a jealousy, it becomes a covenant, it becomes, you know, that type of thing when you're dealing with a covenant, when you're dealing with an inheritance, man, you know what I'm saying? Whether you're talking Jacob and Esau, you know what I'm saying? Whether you're talking uh, even an inheritance like Joseph, you know, and Reuben, you know, Reuben being the firstborn. The Baruch going to Joseph. We've been getting some of that out of the legend of the Jews as well. Let's get, you know, a little bit of this root then. Connect this Moabite flow. And just know that it, it is a family, you know, connection. And even today, you know what I'm saying? When we say cousins and family and more and more, it hurts that much more. <laughs> because you know that it, it is... It is a tribe, it is a family, whether you're talking Lot and you're talking Abraham, you know what I'm saying? That's family. <laughs> Either, I know you're going through this, you know, lineage or that lineage, but that's family. Abraham and Lot is family, man. Ishmael, you know what I'm saying? Is family. Isaac and Ishmael are family, right? So it's as close the bond is as close as it gets Jacob and Esau twins man twins and yet all that riffraff over what a covenant and a blessing over covetousness this is what the brotherly war has always been about is the covenant the pride, the ego, the code. If you don't have a code, then you just go back and forth and it becomes you, you become the op, right? The brother becomes the op because there ain't no code no more. In code, you have order, but who's calling the shots? If we don't get to get face to face with our creator right now at least we have a code you know to tune us up to a frequency so we can be face to face with Hawa are we ready to be face to face with Hawa <laughs> you think so you ready roof chapter one and it came to pass in the days when the judges judged that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Beth Lahem, Beth Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the fields of Moab. All right, so we in the fields of Moab. <laughs> Bring this into the Moab, Utah, Judah, Utah, Utah, Judah, Utah. Bring it right here in America. Let's go. And a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the fields of Moab. <laughs> Let's go. He and his wife and his two sons and the name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife Naomi. And the name of his two sons Malon and Kilian, Ephrathites, the Ephrathites of Bethlehem in Judah. And they came into the fields of Moab and continued there. Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left, her and her two sons, and they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpa, O R P A H, and the name of the other is Ruth. So back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. So verse one says, it came to pass in the days when 
the judges judged that there was a famine in the land. A certain man of Bethlehem in Judah. went to sojourn in the fields of Moab. <laughs> okay, so a man of Judah goes to Moab. Got it? <laughs> he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man is Elimelech. This is Elimelech. All right, his wife is Naomi. And they came into the fields of Moab and continued there in Elimelech. Naomi's husband died there. She was left with her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. So their father, Elimelech, is a man of Judah. He's from the tribe of Judah. A certain man of Bethlehem. And he dies... So his sons, who are also from the tribe of Judah, they take wives of Moab. So this becomes, you know what I'm saying, this pop-offness that, you know, leads to what we'll learn, you know, as the uh, heritage of King David. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As Ruth the Moabite. But let's go. So the name of one of the wives was Orpah, and the name of the other wife was Ruth. So we got Orpah, we got Ruth. Let's go. And they dwelt there about 10 years, and Milan and Kilion died both of them, and the women, the woman, was left of her two children and her husband. So Milan and Kilion died, both of them. Now those who are the sons of Elimelech. Malan and Kilion are both sons of Judah. They're both from the tribe of Judah. Now they died after they took their wives, you know, Orpah and Ruth. Alright, Malan and Kilion died, verse 5. The woman was left of her two children and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the fields of Moab. For she had heard in the field of Moab how Awah had remembered his people in giving them bread. And she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went out the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. Hawa, deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. Hawa, grant you that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept, and they said to her, Nay, but we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb? Then they may be your husbands, that they may be your husbands. <laughs> Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I shall say I have hope, should I have, should I even have a husband tonight and also bear sons? Would you tarry for them till they were grown? Would you shut yourselves off for them and have no husband? Nay, my daughters, for it grieves me much for your sakes, for the hand of Hawa has gone forth against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law but Ruth cleaved unto her and she said behold thy sister-in-law is gone back into her people and unto her God return thou after thy sister-in-law and Ruth said entreat me not to leave thee so Ruth is hanging tight with 
this mother of the tribe of Judah, you know, who was the wife of Elimelech, the mother of Malan and Killian. And uh, they passed away. So these women are now widows, you know what I'm saying? They're now the daughters-in-law of Niel. Now one goes back to her people and her guy back to Moab, right? Verse 16, but Ruth said, nah, man, I'm not going to leave your side. Don't ever ask me to leave your side. This is what made Ruth sober Ruth, right? It wasn't that she's a Moabite, you know, da-da-da. You know, this was already happening, you know what I'm saying, with these, uh, you know, sons of Elimelech. But, you know, it was her heart bone. It was her heart bone that she chose up. She chose right there not to return to her people, not to return to her God, but to stay with Naomi, wife of Elimelech. And Ruth said, I will go where you go, and where thou lodges, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And your God, my God. Your power, my power. So when we talk about Ruth the Moabite, she chose Hawa. She chose Hawa. This is why she was Baruch, you know what I'm saying, later to have her, her womb open. And, and, you know, Hawa gave her that Baruch, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, be the, I believe, the grandmother of uh king david you know what i'm saying we're gonna get that in uh chapter four let's get this piece right here in chapter one so she said man your people gonna be my people your power my power where you dies i will die where you are buried hawa do so to me and more also if aught but death part you and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, she left off speaking unto her. So they went unto, they came into Bethlehem, and they came to pass, and it came to pass when they were to come to Bethlehem that all the city was astir concerning them. And the women said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Call me Mara, M-A-R-A-H, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and Hawa has brought me back home empty. Why call you me Naomi, seeing that Hawa has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, who returned out the field of, who returned out of the field of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. And you know, just for the dismount, I want to get this piece right here. Ruth chapter 4. Let's get on over there. And, you know, get this last, uh, you know, piece to connect this uh, lineage here for us. We'll, we'll get it from verse 10. Moreover, Ruth the Moabite. The wife of Malan, have I acquired to be my wife? Now, who's talking here? This is Boaz. You know, so <laughs> get the story. You know, connect the flow, because you know now she's connecting with the tribe. Now she's back with, you know, Judah. Now she's chosen up with Hawa. Hawa is now giving her the Baruch to pass on, you know, a lineage. You know what I'm saying? So, verse nine in Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilean's and Milan's of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Milan, have I acquired to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren, and from the gate of this place you are witnessing this day and all the people that were in the gate and the elder says we are witnesses but why make the woman that is coming to thy house like Rachel and Leah so even though she was a Moabite she became like Rachel 
in the sight of Hawa, you know, in terms of the Baruch, in the house of Judah, in the house of David, let's go, and Leah, which too did build the house of Israel, and do thou worthily in Ephrath, and be famous in Bethlehem, and let your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore into Judah. Yeah, Queen Tamar is back in the mix. <laughs> Let's go. And the seed which Hawa shall give thee of this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And she went, he went into her. And Hawa gave her conception. She bore a son. And the women said unto Naomi, Baruch be Hawa who has not left thee this day without a near kinsman. And let his name be famous in Israel. Uh-oh, let's go. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of life. Jesus? Nah, he ain't talking, J.C. This ain't no new test. Verse 15, he shall be unto you a restorer of life and a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law who love thee, who is bitter, or excuse me, is better to thee than seven sons. Reuben or Ruth the Moabite is, is better to, to Naomi than seven sons. Shout out to the Aquas has born him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name. She gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. O-B-E-D. He is the father of Jesse, the father of Dawi. So Ruth the Moabite and Boaz got that Baruch from Hawa. They have Obed. Obed is the father of Yeshai, the sinless man, who is the father of Dawi. <laughs> and is he the innocent? Is he the sinless man? Did he commit that murder? I believe David is also a sinless man. Now these are the generations of Perez. Perez beget Hezron. Hezron beget Ram. Ram beget Amenadab. And Amenadab beget Nashan. And Nashan beget Salman. Salman beget Boaz. Boaz beget Obed. Obed beget Jesse. Jesse begot David. Isaiah 3, search for Hawa and Kandawi. The Wada. The Wada Hawa. That your Baruch continues. Baruch are Aquas. Baruch are our children, our droplets. Baruch are ox all across the plain to be one. One with no power before our power. Steady water, a steady wall of protection for our aquas, our children, our kingdom. Let us pop off for one. KTC, we keep the code. To not own session. Yeah, man.